Hi there, I'm Jill Marshall. I'm an author, editor, publisher, and for the next eight weeks, I'm your trainer and uh, workshop facilitator. So welcome to the online program for how to write children's books. I'm very pleased to have you along, and we're going to have some fun uh, and a little bit of hard work over the next eight weeks. Um, I know what a huge step it is to join a program such as this. 13 or 14 years ago, when I decided that I wanted to start writing children's books, I did exactly this, and I signed on for um, a distance learning course. Um, I think, for me, it was that at that stage, I didn't have the um, courage to actually show up to something um, in, in person. Um, and there was a certain amount of safety in the, in the distance learning program. However, uh, times have changed since then. So for me, that was just I would receive an envelope every couple of weeks, and in it would be uh, a workbook. And then I would every few weeks send off a piece of paper to an anonymous person who I never met and never spoke to. And she would send me some feedback from time to time. So this is a little bit similar. However, you will get the chance to hear me as you are now, to see me as you will on video and perhaps on Skype or Facebook. And there will be opportunities for me to feedback um, a little bit as we go, but also more specifically um, at certain times when you've handed in some work. And I also hope that because this is the age of the internet, you'll be able to talk to each other, you will be able to meet your fellow writers, and uh, you'll get a whole lot out of the program that um, means you're able to do it at your own pace, which is one of the advantages of doing the online program, but you'll also get that connection with some of the writers and uh, with me to enable you to feel that you're, um, you're part of a community of writers, which indeed you are. So welcome to the community of writers. I'm really, really happy to have you along. I wanted to take this opportunity to talk you through the next few weeks, give you a little overview of what we're going to be going through in each of the sessions. So we're going to start out quite gently this week with a look at uh, what it takes to be a writer of children's books, indeed a writer of any kind of book. So we'll be looking at what your motivation is for writing. We'll have a think about how you can make it happen for yourself because that's um, a major obstacle for people who are starting out writing and people who are not starting out writing anymore. Um, but um, that getting over the um, challenges of making yourself sit down, making yourself do it, um, making other people recognize that this is important for you and you need to find a way to, to be able to sit down and write. So we'll be looking at some of those issues now. It won't be an instant introduction to starting your books, although you may find by the end of the workbook that you actually want to do that. And if you do, that's great. That's absolutely fine. If you don't, that's also great. As I said, this is one of the main um, delights of the online program is you can do as much or as little as you like without me breathing down your neck and you will be able to go at your own pace and do as much or as little as you want um, in your own time frames. So you can drive yourself as fast as you want or you can hold back for the next lesson and see what that brings as well. So it's going to be um, structured in that we're starting off with an overview what it takes to be a writer. Then we're going to look at some general issues of um, writing any children's book. Um, and then we'll get right down to the nitty gritty of technical stylistic issues. So next week, week two, we're going to be looking at um, snappy beginnings, at how to actually uh, generate some ideas for your books. And then once you've done that, how to start them off properly. Um, so there are various um, instruments and ways to do that now. So uh, there's really quite an art to how to um, start your books, and we'll be looking at some examples that are really fantastic, and some that maybe are less fantastic. And just as a matter of interest, when I'm demonstrating with actual books, um, I will generally use my own as examples, um, and that's for reasons of copyright and so that I don't offend anybody. Obviously, if it's a beginning or a book that I absolutely love, then I'm sure the author wouldn't mind me saying that, so I may use other books in those um, circumstances. So, snappy beginnings uh, next week, and that's going to really get you started on this writing journey into writing your children's books. And then, of course, in week three, once you've got your beginning, there's so much more to do. There's middles and there's endings. So what we're going to be talking about in week three 
is how to continue your story in an effective way that's going to keep the audience that you grabbed with your fantastic beginning and uh, make sure that you maintain that level of interest right through to the very end and that we don't have what we know in the industry as a donut book, which is a book with a soggy middle. Um, soggy middles are very, very easy to come by. And so we're going to be looking at some plotting techniques. And that's what really week three is about. It's about plotting and structure and how to plan out if you're a planner or how to at least um, review your book if you're an editor rather than a, um, than a planner so that you can make the most of all those peaks and troughs and the drama and keeping it all upbeat and interesting right through to that very um, climatic ending that you're going to have and then a little round off uh, for the reader to re-engage with everything that happened in the beginning uh, and has now reached a, a culmination in the ending. So week three is a lot about um, plotting techniques and uh, you might at that stage be able to plan out the rest of your book. And in week four, we're then going to start to hone down onto the technicalities of writing for children particularly, because um, I will often hear, and you may even think this yourself, that people want to write children's books and they want to write for seven to 13 year olds. Well, I'm sorry to have to tell you that there really is no such beast as a 7 to 13 year old reader um, in the, the world of books. So the, the categories are very much more defined. So you will have 5 to 7, 7 to 9, 9 to 11 or 12, and then you'll have 11 to 13 or 14, and then you're getting into YA from about age 14 or 15. Uh, YA being young adult, and we will cover off some YA issues as well. Um, so, uh, and the, what's required for each of those age groups is very, very different, quite specific. So we'll start to talk about um, what size of book you need to be writing for that particular age group. Um, publishers, editors, and writers all seem to think in terms of word count. So that's something you're going to become very familiar with. How many words is it? Um, and I'll even encourage you to start counting the words in books that you like. Um, yes, I mean it. Actually counting all the words in a book that you find popular. There are certain websites you can go on to that will give you a, a bit of a heads up. But if you've got a little book that you really enjoy, just just give it a, an oversee and see if you can judge how many words are in there. So it's that kind of issue. It's also what you write about, because that, again, varies from age group to age group. And it's the style and the tone and uh, the voice that you use to write for that age group. So this may be the moment at which you realise that perhaps you wanted to write for one age and really your style fits a different age group. And that's a wonderful understanding to reach. So this is um, that particular week, week four, is a time when you're going to really start to think about who it is you're writing for and what it is you want to convey to them in the most appropriate way. And it's quite an exciting uh, revelation for writers at that point. So we'll have that sort of overview of what it takes to write for children and then specifically what it takes to write for that children's age group that you're aiming at. And in week five, we're going to get on to the other element of what it is that makes great children's books. So we've looked at story, we've looked at plot, how to get from the beginning to the end with the right amount of um, dramatic input and so on. Um, of course, the other element of any great story is the character. So in week five, we're looking at character development, how to um, get great characters in your story, how to grow them appropriately, how to make them go through some kind of development or challenge, um, how to factor in different ages of your characters, how many characters you should have. These are all the kind of issues that we'll be talking about in week five. And then from then on, I said it was going to get a little bit more technical, and it certainly is. So in week six, we're talking about um, a stylistic issue, a technical writing issue, which is commonly known as showing, not telling. But as that is really a very difficult concept for practically everybody to grasp. Um, and you really only see it when you start to recognize it by reading. And what I'm going to um, hone in on for children's books is the... Um, the skill, if you like, the knowledge of how to get the action on the page. So rather than 
relating it afterwards, you show the action on the page. So that will be um, when you're four or five weeks into it and really getting into the nitty gritty of some writing. And um, that's going to lift your story immeasurably, that ability to get the action on the page. As is what happens in week seven. I love what happens in week seven. This is often the time when somebody will tell me, I honestly thought I wanted to write picture books. Um, but I've just discovered I have a fantastic young adult voice. Or vice versa, they'll say they wanted to write for teens and have suddenly found that really what their, where their niche is is seven to nine-year-olds. So in that week seven, we're going to be looking at narrative voice, as in who's telling the story, and the author's voice. And you will be amazed at what can happen when you switch a few things around. Again, it's fairly technical, in-depth stuff. So um, by then you'll be able to concentrate and you'll know what I mean. And we'll do various exercises that enable you to test out what's your authentic author's voice. And the minute you find it, you will never look back because suddenly everything flows in a way that you could not have imagined. So that's a, a very exciting week for me. Um, in week eight, we're wrapping it all up, and that means hopefully some of you may have reached a point where you've written some other book, and we can talk about, again, down to the fine detail. What kind of language are you going to be using? What language is appropriate for your age group? What language makes your writing come alive? What writing appeals to you or makes you come alive as a writer? And we will specifically look at dialogue. Dialogue is a tricky one for many people to grasp, um, particularly the punctuation of dialogue for some reason. And so we will take a look at how to write really effective dialogue um, that doesn't swamp and overwhelm the uh, book, but is also uh, leading it on and is whatever you want it to be in terms of fun or serious or dramatic and so on. And we'll also look at how to lay it out properly because that is quite critical in terms of you um, getting your book in manuscript form to someone else. So at that point, we're really down to the dotting the I's and crossing the T's in the most literal sense. And it's, um, again, a very exciting stage because you've now had your overview. You've had the umbrella look at what it takes to be a writer. You've learned about plotting and structure. You've developed some characters to go along with your great idea and your fantastic beginning, middle and end. And you're now becoming a true writer with that skill and ability to show the action on the page, to know whose voice you're in, um, and to tie it all together with the most appropriate, brilliant language, fabulous snappy dialogue, and making it all look beautiful for somebody else to read it, which is a, a very important piece of the whole um, book industry. So that's weeks one to eight. Now, at every point, you can always contact me by email. I'm hoping to have um, more regular um, conversation with you via Facebook and so on. But specifically at week four and week eight, you will be able to send me some of your work for me to do a, an assessment on. At week four, it may not be any um, actual writing. It could just be a plan for, or a goal or um, an idea that you've had that you want to explore further as we get more into the program. Or it may be that you've already written something and you'd like me to have a look at that. That's absolutely fine. Wherever you're at is what I'm happy to assess at that stage. So I'll give you all a little bit of feedback on your work. And what we'll also do at week four is have a, a tele-class, a tele-conference, where I will gather all the issues that you, um, as a group, um, would like some more discussion on or would like to elucidate further. So um, that'll be week four, just after week four, um, when I will feed back to you and you'll also get the chance to feed back to me. And then finally, after week eight, you can send me up to 3,000 words of um, what you've been writing. I said, didn't I, that writers always think in terms of word count. So 3,000 words, depending on what you're writing, may be a whole book, if it's a five to seven um, early chapter book. It could be the first chapter of your YA novel. 
it's really entirely down to you as to what that 3,000 words consists of. And if you haven't done 3,000 words, that's fine as well. I will just assess whatever it is that you have written. So I will give you specific feedback um, via the um, Track Changes system on Word. And then also we'll have a further teleconference to wrap it all up um, and make sure that you've got all the answers that you want and that you know where to go to next. So what's the next stage for you? So that will be the, the critical point of that teleconference um, after week eight. So there'll be a lot to do. You're going to be busy. That's why I'm giving you a reasonably gentle start. But as I say, it's entirely up to you how how much and how little uh, and when and where you put into this. Um, this is the, the joy of the online program. Um, you get to pick it up at your own pace and you get to experiment more as well. So while in a workshop situation, I would have to move you on after a, after a certain amount of time, you can just stick with one topic and go off on a variety of adventures um, within that topic, if you like. So you can really, really get down to it and experiment. Um, you can start off six or seven ideas when you might only have the chance to do one on an ordinary workshop. So I think it's great that you're doing it this way and you will get a lot of benefit out of it. Um, as far as feedback goes throughout the program, as I say, I'm always available on email, um, but I won't feedback on pieces of work um, apart from weeks four and eight. But if you just want to ask me a question about something you didn't understand or something that has occurred to you or you're just stuck and you need someone to, um, to prompt you into getting on with it, then by all means um, drop me a line. And I'm also hoping that you will get to be able to talk to each other. So I think Facebook is a wonderful tool for, for doing this um, and whatever social networks you might want to use as well, that's down to you. In the first instance, I will ask you to, um, to just say that it's okay to use your email because that will be an instant way to get in touch with everybody is for you to just send a round robin email. And um, what would be nice if you can want to, uh, is in time you can start to establish little profiles for yourself, where you are, what you're writing, and you will find particular connections with other people in the group who are writing a similar kind of thing or who happen to live near you or um, are the same kind of age group as you. So those are the kind of things that, that will come with time and are the benefit of doing a distance learning um, program in this uh, in the year 2011 as opposed to the year 1997 when I was doing it. So I think it's going to be a great, great program. I welcome you all on board. I encourage you to make the very most of it that you can in whatever way that that is appropriate for you. So if that means that you just spend half an hour a week going through the module, that is absolutely your choice. Um, but if it means that you suddenly immerse yourself every weekend in writing, 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 and um, we have a discussion at the end about where you'd like to go with that, then that is also a fantastic choice to make. So it's entirely down to you. Make